Hi, my name is Justine Harkness, and in this video, we'll look at how to calculate the numerical value of the reaction quotient. To calculate our numerical value of Q, the first thing we need to do is to write our expression for Q. Q will always be a ratio of the concentration of products to the concentration of reactants. Once we have our Q expression written, we just plug in our known values and then compute the value for Q. Now as our reaction progresses, the concentrations of the reactants and products will be changing, so Q will also be changing. And let's take a look at an example, and we'll look at this reaction at three different points to see how Q changes as this reaction goes. Now the first thing that we need to do is to write out a Q expression for this reaction. So we'll start with our concentration of products. We have IO3 minus. We have H3O plus. And in our reactants, we have HIO3. And we also have water. Now water is a pure liquid, so we do not include it in the Q expression. Now part A is asking for the start of the reaction. This means that we are starting with just reactants. At this point we have zero product. Now we can calculate this out, we would say Q would be equal to our concentration of products, which here would be zero molar for both the IO3 minus and the H3O plus. And then we would need to calculate the starting amount of HIO3. Now to do this, we know that we have 10 moles dissolved in one liter. So this would give us a 10 molar concentration. So we can plug in that 10 molar. Now we have zero in our numerator, so zero times zero over 10 would be zero. So at the start of this reaction, our reaction quotient is zero, which makes sense because we don't have any product yet. Now let's take a look later in the reaction. Now we have the same Q expression that we had written earlier. And now we have some concentrations to plug in. So we can put in 0.9 molar for IO3 minus. We can put in 0.9 molar for H3O plus. Then we know the concentration of HIO3 is 9.1 molar. And we do that division, we would get 0.09. And this makes sense because as we produce more product, our value for Q should be getting larger. Finally, let's look at when the reaction has reached equilibrium. Now remember that at equilibrium, Q is equal to KEQ. Now we are given in the question that our equilibrium constant is 0 0.16, and since we are at equilibrium, Q would equal 0.16. So now you should feel more comfortable calculating the value of Q at multiple points during a reaction. 